All right, I can still say good morning. Uh, check my watch. How's everybody doing? Um, I don't have a lot to say. Just anxious to get back, back out there and practice. We're on a short week, but sometimes when it goes quick like this, it's, it's good. It's a good thing. So with that, I'll open it up. Know more about Jordan Love than you did a couple days ago. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, we do. Uh, we've been digging, digging for plays. Uh, it's funny. There's not a lot out there. You know, he had, I think he missed the preseason game, so there were a couple there, and then in that New Orleans game at the beginning of the year. But uh, we'll dig as much as we can and research as much as we can and find out as much as we possibly can about the quarterback that we're going to play against. What, what, what type of challenge do you face facing the quarterback you know, just five days before versus yeah. you know, 10 that, That's a really good question, and that's what we're kind of navigating now. But when it really comes down to it, I said this to the staff this morning, when, you, when there are a lot of unknowns, you defend the scheme. You know, it's still Matt LaFleur over there calling the plays. It's still the Green Bay Packers offensive scheme. I can't imagine they detour too far from that. Um, Will they have some wrinkles? They probably will, and we'll have to just be prepared for whatever they give us. But I think it's more right now defending the scheme and knowing what he can do as an athlete, which I think we all know he is. Um, and I'll tell you what, he can throw the football. Uh, it's evident by the few plays that we saw, no question about that. But the one, but the one difference, though, like last week against the Cardinals, they were, out, they were without three to wide receivers, so you know they're more of a passing team, but they showed they can run the football. No question. 151 yards. How do you, you know, make sure yeah. they defend against I would tell you this. When I say defend the scheme, I, those two running backs are as good as we have faced and will face, in my opinion. And what they do with them, I think, is really, really good. I mean, it's, it's, it's zone schemes and stretch and cutback, and they're downhill. I remember when the running back was at Boston College because I was up in that area at the time. I think he's a really good football player. And 33 can do everything that you want a running back to do. Block and protection, run the rock, and catch the football out of the backfield. So I guess when I say defend the scheme, I'm kind of talking about that. And we, I would expect that they would feature those guys, but we'll see. With the addition of uh, Melvin Ingram, what does he bring to the Yeah, uh, listen, I'm glad to have him. We had an opportunity to visit with him last spring sometime um, when we were in the middle of that. Um, I love his energy and attitude. He loves football. He's passionate about the game of football. That came across uh, when we visited him back a couple months ago. Um, it always takes a little bit when you bring somebody in midstream. You know, yesterday was kind of a light practice, hard to tell. He has spent quite a bit of time with Brendan Daly and Terry. Um, so we'll see where he's at when we get to the end of the week and then have to make a decision. Do you think he can play at this point? That he can play well, I mean, I think there's always a chance because he's a veteran. I think he's a very intelligent, smart football player. That's what it feels like to me. Um, but don't know yet, you know, and we'll, we'll see. Then you got to have the whole, you know, how many you're going to have on the 48 or, the, you know, that, that game day roster. We'll get that all figured out in time. Last week at this time, I was asking what, what would it take to get Frank Clark going. It seemed like he had his, his best game. Yeah. What, what do you see from well, I, I mean, I, I think I said this when you were at, I have seen that. I, I'll be honest with you. I saw it yesterday. Just in, and it was a light practice, but just in the things that he was doing. And I, I go back to, I think we talked about this last time, that I think we kind of forget that not a lot of training camp, right? And then we got into the season, there's a couple of games, and you're on the sideline. That's hard to, but I think he's, hopefully he's hitting stride now. What did you see from him yesterday? I mean, you said life. Yeah, just I, when I was watching him, it was like, but I just, I watched his concentration. He was like doing little things, hands and foot step wise. That's to me, that's huge. That's huge. Hey, Coach Nick Bolton, NFL uh, defensive rookie of the month yeah. in October. How happy are you for yeah. him? And what was his reaction when you heard the news? I don't know that. I just found out not too long ago, to be honest with you. Um, I think Brett Veach texted to me uh, before I went out there for the walkthrough. So I haven't even had a chance to, uh, but I'm sure it's a big smile. Um, listen. He's played some really good football for us, and he's been impressive in, in regards to how much volume he's been able to absorb, and that's helped us. Uh, and we hopefully keep going that way with him as well. Several players have said that he has come off uh, across like a, a veteran in the sense of communication. So now um, you suddenly get Anthony Hitchens back. Yeah. Have a good problem. How are you yeah. planning to navigate that? Well, listen, Hitch to me, uh, he's the guy that smooths everything out. So uh, he'll be in there in certain situations. I'm sure we'll have Nick in there in certain ones. They'll both be in there together, uh, which is a good problem to have. Um, anytime you can have intelligent, you know, good football players at the lineman, at the linebacker spot, I think that's a good thing for us. With, with Hitchens coming back and the way that Nick has played in that kind of middle position, is there an opportunity that you know, Hitch can help out at the same position as well? Um, I don't know if we'll go that route, but um, 
there'll be, you know, we you, there's really usually four of those guys that work in there, really, when you cut. And they'll all, they're all going to get work. I mean, we've got packages for all of them, so we'll get them in there. But I don't yeah. think it's really I want to ask you about Daniel Sorensen a couple of times yeah. last game. He was caught in the bats. From yeah. The Is that, what are you saying from him? Well, listen, he, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. He's in the he, – that, that play over – I mean, just – what is it? Just another – inch and knocking the thing out. I mean, I'm sure he would love to have that play back and knock it out. I think he went, I talked to him real quick after, he kind of went for the catch, you know, he was trying to, and the guy out muscled him, and, and it happened, and that, and those things happened. It was the only real, that and maybe another, that uh, fate, or the, the trick play, I think was the only other one that really got downfield, but um, I, I got the confidence that Dan will make that play, and if the exact same thing happens again, Dan will make it. I don't I think so I mean I that's a better question for him I mean that's an internal thing I mean I don't see any lack of confidence let me just say that back to uh, Ingram for a second once he gets rolling and he's, uh, he's part of the uh, mix here what kind of role do you see for him uh, I, I'm not sure I got it figured out Adam to be honest with you but I mean he is in the defensive end spot um, and we'll just have to you know, it's like anybody that you don't really know a lot about. You got to learn what they can do and what they can absorb, and what they. You don't really find out until you get in a game, you know, because practicing. And so, you'll have to give us a little bit of time to figure out how to use them. With that said, I understand that. But what about what does this mean for Chris Jones? Uh, a little bit of flexibility. <laughs> if you guys noticed last week, we we got him in there as well. So, we want to have Chris. We want Chris to be able to play in both spots, so the teams, you know, don't really know where he's going to line up. When you say that, uh, you know, we've seen we've seen Melvin Ingram. He's a professional. I mean, we've seen him in, in the, with the Chargers over the years. So, I mean, on film, you know what he can do. And you know, he's obviously in game shape with, with uh, coming from Pittsburgh. But is is this a small tacit uh, admission that because last year you talked about when they weren't getting a lot of sacks, you, you know, you said the scheme wasn't meant for pressure. And this year, of course, the scheme was not meant for well, pressure. Well. It was, it was more so they weren't getting as many sacks as they were the year before the, when they went to the Super Bowl. Right. The, the end of May, when you, look at, when you look at him coming into this team, you told me he's going to be defensive. And is it a small admission that the experiment with Chris Jones on the outside no. didn't work? We had an opportunity to bring a good football player in here. I mean, that's how Brett presented it to me. We, had, we, added, a, we added another good football player. That's how I, that's how I look at it. Sorry, when you're trying to build – solid defensive performances. How beneficial is it to end uh, Monday's game like you did, where the game yeah. on the line, your guys got to win? Yeah, listen, that, I mean, look, it's a three-point game, and we all know those can those can turn really quick. So I was proud of the guys and how they went out there and operated at the end. We'd like to be, we'd like to think that we put in those situations, we can do that. I And I think we failed in a game, like the Chargers game or something, somewhere along the way. So it was nice to have our guys finish it and be one of the reasons why we won the football game. Steve what's, your, Steve, what's your philosophy when you're playing a quarterback that's making his first career start? Yeah. Do, you, do you try to bring more pressure or unique pressures more than usual, or do you just want to um, allow the game to sort of dictate how you want yeah. to attack? You know, I would say years ago, uh, you know, I think we had this conversation. I don't know if we talked about Jim Johnson before or whatever, but when the game was a little bit different, I think he may go down that road nowadays, in my opinion, with the new quarterbacks that coming in, especially one we don't know about, but we do know is athletic. It's all the other things that they can do that I don't know that you can just say we're going to bring the house every down because it's a rookie quarterback. But I think we got to pick our spots. But... It'll be a little bit of a learning process in the middle of the game to find out what, what he can do and what they really are asking him to do. Uh, but I, you know, I, I go back to he's been there a year. Like it's not that he's not a, a rookie, which tells me. And if I'm not mistaken, when Aaron was not there in the spring, I think he was the, the guy. So it's not like they have to shut the whole system down, and I would expect that they just roll with what they do. That's just what we're expecting. Um, as a follow-up to what Adam was asking about Ingram acclimating, it seems like he, he, uh, over his career he's played in a lot of 3-4 base defenses. Yeah. How much is that going to affect how he's able to adjust to your scheme? Uh, it, I, it doesn't feel like it should be that tough of an adjustment for him just, just in talking to him. Um, yesterday we just did the light walkthrough and there was something I went over and said, did you know that he, boom, he just spit it right out. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like right now like that's going to be a 
tough adjustment for them, but but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You got it.